and welcome back to AR77. Today we've got quite a serious uh, topic on the video. The topic is self-defense or home defense and air pistols or their perceived function within your self-defense or home defense strategy, you could say. So what I'm going to attempt to do today is give you an, an overall perspective, quite an objective view. I'm going to share some thoughts uh, and after that it's up to you. A couple of things to point out. Obviously my channel is, you know, Air Gun Replicas 77. So I'm guessing that you might think that the fact that these pistols look somewhat realistic means that you think they perhaps have a function when it comes to self-defense or, or home defense. And because they do shoot a projectile, you might think also there's a practical application to that. The pistols I'm going to show you today are all replicas apart from, I think, one or two, which still look quite realistic from, from that point of view. Also, uh, I'm based in England, in the UK, and I'm aware that not all of what I say today is applicable around the world. There are different laws in, in different countries and in different regions, so you will have to apply your local laws and your knowledge of your local laws to what I say today on this video. I'm not endorsing using these as self-defense tools or, or home defense tools. I certainly don't encourage you to use these as home or self-defense tools, but I am going to try and put some facts out there, some practical facts, I guess. Uh, and then after that, really the choice is yours as to how you apply the information that I've hopefully shared with you in this video. Okay, let's get right into it then. So as I said, I'm in the UK. Um, in terms of self-defense in the UK, it's not permitted for you to carry these around with you anyway, in any way other than, you know, in, 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 in by means of transportation. Let's say you just bought one and you're transporting it home and it's unloaded and it's boxed and it's away in a bag and it's, you know, you obviously can take them home from the shop. And if you're going to a range, as long as it's not loaded, as long as it's, you know, in a safe um, case or a box or whatever, you can take that to the to a range, an air rifle range or something like that, or to some private property where you have permission to shoot the, the pistol. But other than that, you shouldn't be carrying these around with you. And I say that because in the UK, if you get caught carrying one of these, the police will treat that as if it is a real firearm. Because, you know, look at the, the, the realistic nature of these pistols. How are the police to know? whether that's real or not. How are the police supposed to know whether something like the Glock 17 there is, is real or not? It looks identical to the real steel. So you will be treated as though you are carrying a firearm. And it's really important that I point that out because heaven forbid steps are taken to, um, let's say, reduce your ability to uh, cause any more panic You'll have no defense. You know, you, you're you not supposed to be carrying these around. So there you go. Again, I'm not being judgmental. I'm not judging people. I'm just giving you the facts. I'm going to give you a few more facts now. I'm going to move these out of the way and bring up a, an image on screen specifically for the UK from the government website. <clears throat> this is pertinent to their use in a home defense situation. So in the UK for a home defense situation, there's very clear guidelines on using reasonable force, what is called reasonable force against intruders. And on the government website in the UK, it says you can use reasonable force to protect yourself or others if a crime is taking place inside your home. This means you can protect yourself in the heat of the moment. This includes using an object as a weapon. And you can stop an intruder running off, for example, by tackling them to the ground. There's no specific definition of reasonable force. It depends on the circumstances. If you only did what you honestly thought was necessary at the time, this would provide strong evidence that you acted within the law and you must read the guidance from the Crown Prosecution Service. So again, reasonable force in the heat of the moment. If someone's approaching the, you, you and they look like they, they mean to cause you harm and you push them away or you kick them away or something like that, that might constitute reasonable force. Um, likewise, 
it says here if you use an object that that might be deemed acceptable also but it goes on to say you do not have to wait to be attacked before defending yourself in your home however you could be prosecuted for example if you carry on attacking the truder even if you're no longer in danger or specifically pre-plan a trap for someone rather than involve the police now that was that was on the government website in the UK as of the 28th of March 2022 after that after this video is released if that changes then I can't I can't you know help you so what does that mean will that pre-plan a trap might mean that anybody out there thinking well I'll just keep one of these next to my bed and then if somebody comes in I'll I'll brandish it and they'll be scared off you know if, if that's your thinking then outside of the practicalities of that you might be breaking the law just by having that ready as, as my as I understand it you're not supposed to have anything ready in self-defense for if somebody comes into your house yeah so when they're talking about here using an object they're talking about something improvised something on hand which you reach out for if somebody's attacking you they're not talking about having a baseball bat under your bed and they're not talking about having uh, an air pistol ready on your bedside table ready to go so that's the law in the UK for, for, the, for the most part really I think that's that's quite clear guidance and I'm gonna leave that now and talk about practical reasons why these are perhaps not the best um, but before I go into before I go into that actually let's just talk about some other things Let's say you did have that next to your bed, right? Let's say you did have that ready and you had it loaded and you had some CO2 in there and you were ready to go. Um, imagine this. Imagine you're in the UK. Somebody comes into your house and they see you holding that, right? Well, in the UK, we've got really pretty strict gun laws. So the first thing to worry about is actually, are the people in the UK who are breaking into your house, are they going to think that's a real pistol anyway? Or are they more likely to assume that it's an air pistol? Unless they see you brandishing something like a shotgun, they might just assume that that's an air pistol anyway, and therefore be less fearful, yeah? Outside of the UK, where people carry guns, if they break into your house and they see you carrying a gun, all they're gonna think is potentially, well, that's a bit of a leveler, yeah? And it might make them even more edgy and more likely to use their firearm even if they weren't planning to do so. So you're increasing your risk. Think of this also, I know what I'm like in the middle of the night, if I hear a noise and I get up, you know, without a couple of coffees and a bit of toast, I'm, I'm ready for no one. So what sort, of, what sort of mindset are you in when you think you're gonna just jump out of bread, jump out of bread, jump out of bed, you know, James Bond style and, and be ready with your, with your .177 calibre pistol there. There's going to be adrenaline running around your body. If you are, if you feel like your family are at risk, if you feel like you you know you've got children in the house or a loved one or something like that, and you feel that they're at risk, you're going to have all sorts of concerns going around your mind about that as well. You're going to be in a highly emotional state. Okay. Again, all these things are counting against you potentially. Uh, and realistically, you know, if you brandish one of these at somebody and you do decide to shoot you might get off four or five rounds. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. You might get off four or five rounds with something like that before they realize it's an air pistol and they've already run towards you and they've sort of rushed you and then they're on you at that point anyway. You'd have been better off getting out of the house. So again, a couple of things just to consider. Just if you're still thinking, maybe he's not as capable as I am, maybe I could do some things, let's think about it from a different point of view let's think about practicality let's say you chose something like that a revolver okay looks the part from that aspect but as soon as somebody sees that end in this particular pistol this is the s25 by umrex they're going to see that's not a caliber i need to particularly worry about that's a 0.177 you know it looks like a small hole even if somebody doesn't know pistols or firearms they can see that that's a small barrel and they're perhaps at that point not going to worry too much about you. Yeah. Also, six shots in that. And after those six shots, that's it. You're not going to have any more time than that. Okay. So once you've used those six shots, it's on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's perhaps not a good idea. And I would say that 
for any revolver style pistol. Let's move on. Let's look at this Glock 17 Gen 4. More rounds in that. More rounds. You've got about 18 rounds in that pistol. And again, it, it looks very realistic. So that's one thing which might dissuade somebody, might put them off, or might make them galvanize and come at you even harder, or perhaps draw whatever they're carrying. Because remember, the, the criminals aren't thinking about what's lawful and what's not lawful in terms of what they carry. So somebody comes in, they see that, and then they go, okay, well, the situation has escalated. If you shoot that at somebody, you might shoot 18 rounds at somebody, but you've got a blowback going on with this pistol. Yeah, this pistol has got a blowback. So it's going to recoil every time. That slide is going to reciprocate every time you shoot. And if that's happening, you're losing CO2 for that function. Because what, what these guns are there to do is look like the real thing. They are replicas. They replicate functionality and they replicate looks, but they don't replicate effectiveness. So when that's doing that, it's burning through your CO2. And each one of those shots is going to cause less and less damage to whatever it hits, whether that's a, whether that's a paper target or whether that's an intruder in your house. The, the, the power that this is going to hit somebody with, if they've got a thick jumper on, it's not going to make them think twice. And if they're desperate for something, if they're desperate for money, or if they're desperate for something because they've got their needs of their own, they're not going to think twice about something like that. And you, for, you can forget it against something like a leather jacket or any sort of, you know, I mean, head protection or face protection. You've got nothing, you've got nothing for them, really. You know, you might think, okay, well, let's, let's forget the, um, let's forget the blowback. Let's move that to one side. Let's not use a pistol that uses blowback. Let's use something more like this. This is the SIG SP2022. Again, you know, you've got 18, 19 rounds in that magazine. You might have a spare magazine, 18, 19 rounds in there. Pretty quick to, to change your magazine. Um, but have you got time to do that? You know, once, once you've gone through that first magazine, they're probably on you. You know, likewise with something like the Glock, you know, people might go, well, it looks realistic loading that, and it looks realistic cocking it, but no one's going to wait around while you stand doing that sort of stuff. So you've really got to think about these things practically. For the SIG there, we've got no blowback. We've just got a fixed slide. So you've got 18 rounds, 36 rounds if you've got two magazines. But again... It's not going to be that powerful. It's not going to be powerful enough to anybody who's really determined. You know, you can take you can take these shots. Anyone who's been paintballing knows that it, it stings at a paintball game. But it's not the end of the world if you're determined and if you're that sort of person. You will you will continue, you know, you will progress. So you don't want to use that either. You might think, well, what about something? Let me just have a look at this. What about something? like um, that. That looks even more intimidating. Yeah, and there's no blowback on that, and that shoots pellets. Yeah, well, it might something like that might make, make you feel more confident. You've got the F, this is the 92FS by um, Biomerex again. Pellet shooter. Feels heavy in your hand, and it might make you feel like you're Bruce Willis or Mel Gibson or whatever, but that's got eight rounds. That's a rotary magazine in there, that's eight rounds. So you're back down to a low round count, yeah? I mean, you might be able to throw it at somebody. You know, you might go, well, I'll just have it, and then if once I run out of ammunition, I'll throw it at them, or I'll just, I'll, I'll just use it as a bludgeon anyway. But if that's the case, you've still got it lying around ready to do that, at which point perhaps you're breaking the law because someone's going to go, well, why isn't that kept in a safe place? Why haven't you got that locked away? Or why don't you have it somewhere safe? Why was it just lying around, even if you don't use it as a pistol? Even if you just use it as a, as a blunt tool, what was it doing next to your bed? So this is what I'm saying about the laws and, and being very careful um, about, about what the law says and what your intentions are and what your actions make it look like your intentions were. So um, you might choose something like the, the M17. You might think, okay, this is a this is a bit a bit more like it. This is a, a realistic looking pistol. I've got that I've got that you know that fear factor. And I'm I'm pretty sure that that would scare somebody off. And even if it didn't, it's shooting pellets and it looks imposing. And for this one, I've got twenty rounds. I can shoot twenty rounds out of this, no problem. But unless you've got it ready, who's going to wait for you to load that with twenty pellets and then pull that back? And then stick your CO2 in and wait for that. You know, they're not, they're not just going to stand there waiting while you're doing all of that. So again, it's 
specifically in the UK, if you sit with that next to your bed ready to go with 20 rounds of ammunition in it and a CO2 canister in it ready to go, at the very least, you're possibly going to ruin the seal on your CO2. You're possibly going to leak CO2. You know, that's, that's the very least of your problems. If somebody comes into your house expecting you to use that, well, you either got to you've got to sit with it unloaded, at which point you haven't got time to load it, or you've got to sit with it loaded, at which point when the police come around to investigate what happened in your house, you have to say, "Well, I had it ready," at which point you're the guy in trouble again. So you take that off the table, and what are you left with? Well, perhaps you're left with something that looks a little bit more like that. Now that is the Umrex. HDR in the UK designed really to be a paintball marker 7.5 joules it's shooting 50 caliber balls you know paintballs or you can get like rubber training balls etc etc there's a few different types of ammunition you can get for this it doesn't look like a real pistol but perhaps it looks realistic enough for somebody who doesn't know the way around guns maybe they see that big hole at the end there that big, big imposing you know muzzle there and they kind of go, do you know what, think twice about this. That's going to hurt if it hits you. If you shoot that at somebody, that's really going to hurt. But it's a revolver. You've only got six rounds. The benefit of something like this is, yeah, you've got the you've got the CO2 there ready. You can pierce it as soon as you need it. And then you've got six rounds of 50 caliber ammunition, which is, you know, it's going to be non-lethal in this case, but still quite, quite a deterrent in, in other countries. These are sort of marketed as home defense tools. Six rounds though, only six rounds. And with all that emotional stuff going on and that adrenaline, are you gonna be accurate with six rounds, you know, with those sights? I mean, you're probably not gonna be using your sights anyway, are you? You're gonna be panicking so much, you're just gonna be pointing it in, in the direction that you think the threat's coming from and pulling the trigger. I don't know. I don't know what you think about that. Again, I'm just putting options on the table. It's up to you. Other than that, you might go, well, let's, uh, let's look at the other one then that's, uh, that's available. This one. This is the Umrex T4E HDP, Home Defence Pistol, they call it in some countries. Um, again, it's so still only six rounds. You've got all the quick piercing and stuff. Better sights, yeah, definitely, if you're going to be using sights in that situation. But six rounds. And even so, e even with that, and even with the revolver, if they're sat there next to your bed ready, then you had intention, didn't you? You had intention to use it to carry out that plan, which would contravene certainly UK law. I don't know what it's like around the world. Um, but yeah, you in the UK, you're going to land in deep water anyway. Once again, you might think, well, never mind. It's okay. I'm going to have time. I'll shut myself in a room. I won't have it ready, but I know where it is if I need it. Does that constitute a plan? I don't know. Possibly, yeah. You might think, well, what about something like that? What about the uh, the PPQ there? The T4E kind of replicas range, really. It's training tools or, or non-lethal options in other countries. In this country, paintball markers, yeah? 43 calibre paintball markers. You've got the PPQ. There's a Smith & Wesson m &P. There's the SFP9 or the VP9 uh, HK. Um, there's the Glock. Really nice pistols, really good. Um, you know, in terms of realism, very realistic. Nice open end there to the barrel. Um, you've got these kind of, you know, these uh, chunky, heavy magazines. I think you fit eight in there. So you've got eight rounds still. Still not a lot, but eight rounds is, is, is respectable. Um, you can get um, other magazines for these, like this one here, which are quick pierce. So, you know, again, if you're using a quick pierce magazine in it, does that say to somebody, i.e. the law, that you were using it in a premeditated fashion? Did you have a plan to use that pistol? Maybe that says that you did. This may well be up to the challenge of preventing somebody getting at you, maybe. But to keep it loaded, to keep it, you know, to, to use these emergency cartridges outside of the field of paintball, perhaps, where you just want to carry a few mags, but not pierce the CO2 until you're ready to load up and go. That makes sense on a paintball field or in a paintball match, or if you're just using it in a safe 
training environment as a as a training tool or something like that you know in your home you're going to get you're going to get in deep water really deep water and i i would prefer that you didn't same issue with the paintball shotguns and things like that as well you know 68 caliber some of those really good really powerful deterrent but you're going to be breaking the law by using them so essentially to round it up i would have to say that as as enticing as it might feel you know to have something like that as a as a tool for self defense or for home defense i just all roads for me lead to the fact that it's not the best idea yeah they might look the part you might feel confident using these things I just don't think it's a good idea, personally. Never mind it being unlawful in certain circumstances. It might not even be your best option in other circumstances. So what can you do in a home defence or a, or a self-defence situation? Well, for a start, be a nice person, be a decent person. Don't make enemies. Be nice to your neighbours, be nice to your community so that you're all looking out for each other so that people know when there's a strange person knocking on your door or looking around the back of your house or whatever. Keep your house well lit. Don't leave your windows and doors unlocked. You know, don't leave your tools outside. Don't leave ladders outside your house. Things that people could use to gain entry. Common sense stuff. You know, get a dog. A great deterrent, a great sentry. And, you know, in peacetime, a really good friend for the family. So there's a whole host of things that you could do better, you know, than, 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 than using one of these or thinking of using one of these as your last line. You know, uh, be in good physical shape. Learn a martial art, be able to stick up for yourself, that sort of thing. Please do think about your decision to buy one of these for that purpose. If that's what you're thinking, think about it. Think twice before you buy one of these for that purpose of home defence or self-defence. Please also think twice before you designate one of these for that purpose. You know, if you've got these already, because you could land yourself in more trouble. Yeah, so I, again, I've tried to be objective, but the, the facts of the matter point towards it not being a great idea. All the best. Take care. Please do stay safe. Bye.